Right now, we're going to show you one of the latest attack ads against Mitt Romney. I'm, this is really powerful. I think this is going to resonate with a lot of Americans that are struggling with this tough economy. I want to, I want to show it. Let's see what you think. Out of the blue one day, we were told to build a 30-foot stage. Gathered the guys, and we built that 30-foot stage, not knowing what it was for. Just days later, all three shifts were told to assemble in the warehouse. A group of people walked out on that stage and told us that the plant is now closed and all of you are fired. I looked both ways. I looked at the crowd and uh, we all just lost our jobs. We don't have an income. Mick Romney made over $100 million by shutting down our plant and devastated our lives. Joining me right now is uh, the CEO of Euro Pacific Capital and author of the book, The Real Crash, Peter Schiff. Peter, you just, you just saw that. You're a business owner. How do you justify what people just saw? Well, it's an ad that's designed to appeal to people that don't understand how capitalism works. And I guess that's fitting because Obama doesn't understand it either. But yes, it's very appealing. But the problem is sometimes people lose their jobs in a free market. And sometimes the best way to create better jobs is for some people to lose their jobs. Look, resources in an economy are scarce. And it's up to a business to produce as much output using as little input as possible. And some of those inputs are labor. But whatever Peter. labor is freed up by one business is now available to do Peter. something else and to be more productive. Peter. And you know, sometimes, Peter. let's I... say there's a company yeah. with a thousand people that is losing money and is gonna go bankrupt. If firing 200 people can keep that company in business and profitable, then you fire 200 people, you save the jobs of 800, and now those 200 people can start doing something more productive with their time and labor, and everybody will what, benefit. What are they gonna do more productive with their time? Sit around without a job? Well, no, I, I they're mean, gonna what, get what, other it, jobs. Look, but, no, it sounds great, it sounds great. What you're saying sounds great, uh, what I understood of it, H however, to the regular guy sitting out there, America's a mess right now. They don't have jobs. That ad is powerful. And, and, and your answer well, I didn't is... Well, say it wasn't no, a no, powerful wait, wait, wait. ad. Your, your it might, it is, might even work. Your That's answer is sometimes we have to fire democracy. people to create you more can, jobs. You can get votes But that's with not going to play like to the voters. That's not what the voters are going to think when they see that. Do you think Mitt Romney has countered this ad correctly? Has he fought no, back? No, I think he needs to embrace the free markets in, in a bigger way and explain that the biggest barriers to job creation is government. Look, I'm a small employer. I have about 150 employees. And the only reason I hire people is to make more money for myself. That's the only reason anybody has a job, because their boss wants to make money. But I would have a lot more people working for me now if it wasn't for government. In fact, I've opened an office in the Caribbean, and I'm opening up another one in Ireland. I would rather do that in America. I would rather employ more Americans, but the U.S. government makes that impossible because they've made it too expensive. The regulations are, are, are pricing American workers out of the market. You're an outsourcer. Proudly. Yeah, right? and so was Mitt Romney. But what he should run on is why. What forced him to outsource? It was big government. It was the exact type of policies that Obama is pursuing. And if we want a vibrant economy, we got to get the government out of the way. We can't run up the Peter, cost of doing business Peter, in this country. Peter, how do we get these jobs back in America? That's what I want to know. How do we get them back? Well, we need a lot less regulations. We need less government spending. We need lower taxes. We need to shrink government so that the economy can grow. We have to empower entrepreneurs uh, in, instead of trying to put barriers in front of them, which is what's happening with me and my business, and which is happening with a lot of businesses. You know, when I give advice to, uh, to young people starting businesses, one of the things I tell them is, hire as few people as possible because the government has made an employer being an employer is almost like your public enemy number one and the minute you hire somebody they're coming at you from all angles there's all kinds of taxes fines litigation regulation it's better if you can run your business without hiring anybody what i mean what kind of country is this obama's attack on the american breadwinners and peter schiff's take on it coming up next well, unless you've been hiding under a rock You've probably seen this by now, but I want to play it one more time because the more I hear it, and the more you hear it, the more ridiculous it sounds. Somebody helped to create this unbelievable American system that we had that allowed you to thrive. Somebody invested in roads and bridges. If you got a business, that, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. Wow. All right, Peter, you heard him. According to uh, our beloved president, you, you didn't build your business. If you didn't do it, Peter, who, who built your business? 
I don't know. I remember when I first started as a one-man shop in a one-bedroom apartment, I would put in 16-hour days. I didn't see Obama there helping me out. You know, this whole idea, though, is resting on the false premise that the wealthy people made their money by taking something out of society and that they have to uh, give back. It's actually the opposite. Wealthy people earn their money by putting in. They provide the economy with all the goods and services that we desire. You know, I'm not doing this interview naked. I've got a suit of clothes Thank on. God. And the wealthy people that provided me with these clothing, yes, they got paid, but I'd rather have the cash than the clothes. But in the process of satisfying my desire to, to not be naked, they employed a lot of people. So it's the wealthy entrepreneurs that take all the risks, that, t that, yep. that take all the sacrifices, that work the hardest, that put in the most hours, that keep the society going, that create all the goods and services, and they provide all the jobs. And the biggest barrier to doing that is government. Peter, you're not naked from, I mean, what we can see, your clothes, but... <laughs> Yes, and, 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 so, and look, wait, 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 wait. everything so, that I have, yeah. I bought from some rich yeah. person that wanted to make a buck. And they gave me, look, look at all the, all the things that we have that Steve okay, Jobs Peter, provided Peter. us with, all the, the computers and all, all the products that we love. Did, right. did he have to give anything back? Peter. As far as I'm concerned, he shouldn't have paid any taxes. All right, look, I know you like making a buck. It's great. But other than making a buck, don't you have any responsibility to give back to society? You've, you've made a lot of money. Obama just says we should all, we should all just put it in a big uh, pot and, and share it. Isn't that well, nice? No, but, I or, but I'm already giving to society, as are all businessmen, by providing goods and services and creating jobs. You know, the people that need to give back, what about somebody who's living on welfare or, or, or just collecting? just collecting checks. What have they put in? Why don't they give something back? Look, you can't just go after the rich. And the problem is, if you try to tax the rich more, a lot of rich people are just not going to work as hard. They're not going to produce as much. They're not going to create as many jobs. Peter, can American businesses handle four more years of, of this president? I don't know. Mine might, uh, because part of my business is helping Americans get their money out of harm's way by investing abroad, buying gold and silver, getting out of the dollar. Uh, you know, since wow. an Obama presidency is terrible for the economy, you know, it, uh, my business might improve somewhat, although I'm not sure if I'm going to have any money left over after he finishes taxing me. Uh, but, but the bigger problem is we have structural economic problems, huge imbalances that have been built up over years under both Democrat and Republican presidents. We, 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 our economy is all screwed up. Interest rates have been too low. We've consumed too much. We've borrowed too much. We're going to have a real crash coming. I would definitely rather have a Romney in the White House when that happens, because at least he believes in capitalism. He might not understand it completely, but he believes in it. I think in his heart, Obama is a socialist, and he is looking for any kind of failure to, to ratify that belief. He's going to blame everything on capitalism. This is not capitalism's fault. This is government's fault, central banking, central planning. We need a real free market in the United States if we're going to survive and thrive. So no matter what, the American public is going to lose, no matter how we vote. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate it. Uh, and it's, it's on the uh, Twitter sphere as well. Uh, there's lots of reaction. Here's uh, Andy. He says, Bain Capital is like the ex-girlfriend. Mitt Romney tries to crop out of his profile picture, but everyone can still see her arm.